guys, the year is almost over, the holiday season is upon us, and you know what that means. Another major driver release from AMD. Mm -hmm. Now, it may sound like a long time between drivers, but let me explain. So AMD is currently on a cycle of multiple driver releases throughout the year to optimize for latest games, but every 12 months or so around this time, they release this major driver package that really pushes their software development forward. So last year around this time, we got the Relive Edition, which gives us uh, the ability to record gameplay, to stream gameplay. Uh, we had new features with Enhanced Sync. We got Radio and Chill and new Wattman set. And so now it's time for another major step forward called Adrenaline Edition. And with it, AMD is supposed to have a lot of interesting new items in their drivers and software. Because who doesn't like talking about drivers and software, am I right? So let's get into that right after this. Get ready for the holidays with MassDrop's fast shipping of their gift collection items they'll get to you before Christmas. Like these EMU Purple Heart headphones with beautiful warm sound and unique wooden purple housing that are easy to drive with your phone and come at a fair price too. Join the drop, link below. All right, so let's begin. The first thing I wanna make clear is that just like Relive, Adrenaline isn't meant to add massive performance boost to your existing graphics card. So if you're a Radiant user who was expecting massive performance improvements, don't get your hopes up. Instead, these are really meant to add new features and optimizations for the user, which in my eyes have been very uh, complementary to the whole like you know streaming scene and just uh, being able to capture things and being able to display some performance metrics on your display, all done through adrenaline. And with regards to performance, AMD showed us this chart, which shows that since December of 2016, when Relive Edition was first launched, they've made some performance improvements in some games. Although, let's be real, no Nobody plays Andromeda anymore. And come on, you always gotta start the graphs at zero. It's also important to remember that these numbers were acquired with an RX 480, and none of the games aside from Overwatch was actually launched when Relive was launched. So it's clear that optimizations were made available when those games actually were available to the market. And if you're wondering about Vega, based on our conversation with AMD, it all points towards very little to no improvements over Relive 17.11.1. Moving on to something that could affect performance professional gamers, AMD has found a way to decrease latency and increase responsiveness in DX11 titles. But AMD did not stop there and other changes in other areas were made too, like frame rate target control for example. It allows Radian users to select a specific FPS, so performance and power won't be wasted displaying higher than desired frame rates. And this is a great option for lower paced games that don't require ultra low frame rates to achieve proper gameplay speeds. And AMD is now making this available for Vulkan titles so it will work in games like Doom and Wolfenstein New Colossus. There's also a shout out to all the miners who are driving up all those prices for AMD. I don't know how I feel about that. So there's now a specific selectable compute profile that's actually supposed to offer up to 15% better hash rates than the typical gaming setup. It will definitely put the RX series far ahead of Nvidia in terms of mining applications, but how will that affect pricing? It's kind of like a preliminary slap in the face that you know is coming. So performance is not really a priority for Adrenaline, it's really the added features that come with it, and while we'd all love to see nice uh, frame rate boost with Adrenaline and the new drivers, that's just not gonna happen in today's environment. So one of AMD's main goals with Adrenaline is to offer new community features so gamers can more easily interact with one another. Their addition of Wattman allows for exactly that. Wattman is basically the utility to overclock your graphics card. So now you'll be able to save your custom profile and load them into the cloud for others to actually use, or you can load someone else's settings to see how they act on your machine. It's a really cool feature, but of course, caution will have to be taken into account. I have not talked about radio and chill. It's still around and some people are getting paid big bucks to say good things. That guy's probably like, chill, bro. If I was in that picture, I'd probably be like, just chill. So it uses custom profiles designed by AMD to dynamically adjust frame rates based on movements in game. So if there's an area without much detail, it will lower the clock speeds on the card and maintain playable frame rates while also lowering power consumption. And now with Adrenaline, it's going to support even more games and it will be a very big deal for Vegas 64 users who are tied to a very hot, very power hungry graphics card. Now past those features, AMD will be improving enhanced sync. Basically enhanced 
sync reduces the amount of screen tearing when the in-game frame rate exceeds your display's refresh rate, but before, its compatibility was a bit limited. Adrenaline opens it to all GCN-based GPUs, allows for operation in games with Vulkan API, and it will finally work with multiple GPUs and across multiple displays. A lot of these features users have been asking for so long and are finally here. So one of the major changes with the Radeon Settings app is that AMD wants it to become like the hub or where you control, where you can share your gameplay, where you interact with other members of the community, whereas on the Relive, it was just offered some basic control, but now with Adrenaline, you have a lot more options. So in the Gallery tab, this is where you can manage, modify, and organize, and even upload in-game live captures and screenshots. It's pretty well done and intuitive. You can share them across multiple social platforms and upload multiple files at the same time. In the Accounts tab, you can manage your Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and all the rest, and Twitter. Now, for our experience on Twitter, for example, it would time out. It wouldn't let us connect to Facebook or YouTube, so I'm sure that AMD will patch it out once it's fully released, but in our early version, we couldn't really test out that uh, streaming feature just yet. But this will all be complemented by a very low frame rate overhead when video capture is enabled, and interactivity also takes on a whole new form with the new Radeon overlay, which literally puts all the most important functions from Radeon settings onto the screen in games. For example, there's performance monitoring with FPS and logging of overall frame rate metrics, although the one second minimum interval feels kind of slow, especially when displaying frame rate. You also cannot adjust the order on how these metrics are displayed. For example, if I want the GPU and CPU utilization right next to each other, you cannot move them. They're gonna kind of just stuck on where they've been placed by AMD. Radeon Relive settings are also available as an overlay too, with instant replay, record, and stream, and screenshot functions. Radeon Chill is here as an overlay, so you can turn that on and off, even modify settings on the fly. And yes, FreeSync is here too for complete control. And don't forget that the frame rate target control I talked about earlier is here as well. But maybe one of the most important additions for me is color overlay that gives you access to quick and painless color correction options without having to actually quit the game. It's awesome stuff to add some saturation and brightness. You can even change the hue. The contrast slider should be renamed to gamma since that's what it controls. But my favorite is color temperature. So you can make it extra warm uh, in game for less eye fatigue. Now these changes are only visible to the user and do not affect your on-screen capture. So if you're tinkering with the color stuff, that's only for your visual advantage when you're looking at the monitor and doesn't actually affect the output file. But I do have a point of feedback and that is to label the recorded clips, not just by the date, but perhaps by application like we have on GeForce Experience. And the last thing to talk about is AMD Link. I'm actually quite surprised they went the whole smartphone route and be able to see performance statistics on your phone, iOS or Android, but I guess it kind of makes sense. It ties to the whole you know, peripherals. Some keyboards have a smartphone stand, so I'm guessing it's not totally outrageous, but uh, it's kind of cool how you're able to actually control the relive functions, being able to start and share your on-screen gameplay through your smartphone without, I'm guessing, exiting and alt-tabbing or like the alt ring into the relive functions. That is pretty cool. The new Tesoro Gram SE Spectrum is one seriously beautiful keyboard with per-key RGB illumination, macro customization built in, and comes with Tesoro's new removable optical switches that are dust and water resistant with linear reds or clicky blues. Full details on the SE Spectrum down below. And so there you have it, AMD's big adrenaline driver launch. I'm pretty excited about the features, but of course we we're testing the earlier software. So uh, some things were not working like being able to connect to YouTube or Twitch to stream things. Uh, regardless of me setting the frame rate for recording at 60 FPS, all my footage except one file turned out to be at 30 FPS. Windows decided to revert to the older driver on AMD because Microsoft likes to be a nice control freak, but I'm hoping all these things, of course, will be uh, cleaned out when uh, the software launches today. Now, there aren't really any performance increases with this driver, but they really kind of improved on the areas that Relive lacked in terms of capturing your footage and sharing it and having all this control. But what would you guys like to see more from AMD in terms of the driver software? Let me know in the comments below how do you think they did in terms of connectivity and the whole user experience. I think their UI still needs a little bit of work. The whole boxes approach is great for being able to expand things and it kind of like folds into nice little pieces there. But sometimes it's kind of difficult to find what you're looking for because it's just like 
it's very compact. But overall, Adrenaline is a good step forward. I'm excited to see more, so make sure to check out this other relevant content, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. <sighs> <clears throat>